Hey everyone, Mike Andes here. We are going to do some live Q&A today. Uh, it's going to be a good one. And we're also going to be announcing the winners of round one of Mo Madness. So throughout the next, let's say, 10 to 15 minutes, you can still submit your bracket. You can go to mikeandes.com slash vote and submit your bracket. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, start with some Q&A. Uh, but throughout the next few minutes, make sure you submit your vote uh, because this is going to determine round number one of Mo Madness. If you don't know what Mo Madness is, let me refresh your memory. Uh, so let me go ahead and share you my screen here uh, and hop over to this bad boy. So this is, if you go to mikeandes.com slash vote, you're going to see this page here. And this, as it says here, voting for the round number one ends today. We're on the, we're going to do this live today. So this is the brackets for round number one. Okay. So uh, as you can see, it ends today. This is round number one and everyone needs to vote on who is going to win, which one you uh, believe is the better YouTuber. Cause we're determined the YouTuber, the lawn care YouTuber of the year. And the winner of this is going to get a full film day with the team. So I send my media team out uh, and the entire day we'll film them, basically do kind of what we do a zero term, we'll give them all the footage and pictures and stuff for their website or $2,000 cash. And then as we had last week, whichever of you get closest on your bracket, the most accurate on your bracket will also get either $2,000 or a full day of uh, the marketing team heading out there and giving you great content. So head over to mikeandes.com slash vote, submit your bracket just down here at the bottom. You basically determine which one's going to win. And uh, it's great. So I'm going to go ahead and answer some questions and we'll come back to this because I'm going to actually show you where the standings are at for round number one. Uh, but let's go ahead and hop into some Q and A. So thanks everyone for hopping on here. Thaddeo, welcome. Greenscapes, Ohio. Mo Madness is awesome. Yes, let's go. Uh, cool. So if there's any questions, feel free to comment. I'll do comments today. I'm not going to do the call-in show. So feel free to just comment if you have specific questions. Yes, this is Brad. Brad, wave. Hey, everybody. <laughs> I know some of you have probably done call with Brad. He's the one that on p4psoftware.com, you can book a call with him uh, if you have questions about P4P and implementation. Um, let's go ahead and show these brackets. So if we head on over to, this is currently the brackets for Mo Madness. So if you have not yet, submit your vote because this is what it's going towards right here. So currently there's 444 responses. We can see right now that Stanley the Dirt Monkey is blowing away the lawn care nut. So we're going to need some serious help if you think that the lawn care nut should be winning this match. We have quite a few blowout winners here. Like Lawn Care Juggernaut has 76% of the vote over Copper Creek Cuts. So, you know, we're going to need some serious Steph Curry action here for the, the, in the, the fourth quarter if there's any chance of uh, Brad coming back. So I don't know if someone can ping Brad, uh, but he needs to do something because uh, we got to win this round here. And Longcare Juggernaut posted about it the other day. He has 339 votes to his 105 votes. So we go down here a little bit more. Looks like Top Notch Lawn Care is taking the lead right now in round one over Al Blades. So we need some Al Blades fans. Hop in here. Make it a little more even. We're having some blowout winners in this round number one, I have to say. It's going to be interesting when we go to the Elite Eight to see who is uh, going to top that one as well. Okay, this one. Whoa! Ryan Knorr is crushing Brian's lawn care. Brian's lawn care. Lawn means You really need to post about this. Get some followers in here because uh, we got a, a bit of a slaughter fest here happening in round number one of Mo Madness. So, again, if you haven't, go to MikeAnnie.com slash vote. Is he getting paid for that performance? <laughs> so, uh, let's see here. We got – okay, so Keith Kalfas is losing out to Blades of Grass. Again, we have 334 votes for Blades of Grass Lawn Care to Keith's 110. Another blowout victory here, unless we have some late votes here, you know. I don't like to say that this is a landslide victory because we know what happens uh, when we count ballots uh, in landslide victories. Anyways, here here we got Spencer Lawn Care. Whoa, Lawn Care Life is crushing. Whoa, we have 399 votes to Spencer Lawn Care's 45. How is that even possible? Okay, well, we're, we have another landslide victory. It looks like happening in match number six. I don't know, not know why the media team has this red and blue. 
I have to say, we politically we're not correct in this, but it uh, looks like we have uh, some serious uh, landslide wins here. But we are late in the fourth quarter. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is Tigran versus SB Mowing. SB Mowing has 425 votes to Tigran's 19. Mercy, goodness. This is what you call a blue wave. Mercy. <laughs> uh, okay, last match here is Florida Turf Pros versus It's His Turf. It's His Turf has 74% of the vote. That's actually really shocking. Uh, he hasn't put a whole lot of con. Oh, I guess he's been doing a lot of those uh, mowing videos recently. But Florida Turf Pros, man, come on, Jonathan. Let's get out there and uh, get some votes. So we will refresh this in a few minutes, see if there's uh, – you can still submit your votes. And, again, the winners – of these brackets are going to get either two thousand dollars cash or they are going to get you're going to get the uh full media package with our team to come out and do videos and pictures for your team so we'll come back to that in just a second see if your vote uh has been added to that definitely check that out go to mikeandys.com slash vote let's go ahead and submit some questions and dig into this green splatter asks hi mike sent two thousand postcards for every door direct mail to the post office yesterday haven't got any calls yet, so I'm guessing, hoping, they haven't sent them yet. Uh, yeah, typically on the bundles that you give to the post office, you can determine which day, uh, which date, I should say, they are going to be putting those out. So um, typically, I like to have them all done the same day or spread them out over the course of a few days because it's really about the climate. So if you have really bad weather, honestly, that can like half the return of your investment when it comes to every door direct mail. And yeah, they're very much hit and miss. I've seen some locations... In some places, get a literally a one percent response rate, and then other people's get like a 0.01 percent response rate, which is basically like one person responding out of two thousand. So, the nice thing about print is you can have a long tail. People can potentially respond to you in a week or two after they have put their your, your postcard up on the fridge. But typically, the bulk of your leads are going to happen the seventy two hours after your every door direct mail is uh, delivered. So, I would be watching your your forecast massively because uh, at least in our climate if it's a sunny day in march uh our return on the every door direct mail campaign will be significantly higher than if it's a rainy wet cold day how do you advertise in next door do you pay per month or like facebook ads oh uh, yeah it's ba basically by the neighborhood and then you can do it based upon each month it's usually a certain amount per neighborhood between like a 70 cents and a few bucks depending on the size of the neighborhood that you can market in and it's usually by the month that you pay for that i would not recommend sponsorships but local deals are good hey mike i'm only 14 years old and i own my own lawn care business and always listen to your videos while i cut my properties for you have any advice for me yeah i would say lean into the fact that you're 14 years old and realize that you, that's your usp your unique selling proposition and realize that in five years, it will not be your unique selling proposition anymore. So just lean into it. Uh, the first, you know, the next five years, you're still going to be cute and people will hire you for that. And just lean into it. Don't try to be the, ne the next professional million dollar company. I went door knocking with door hangers. Let's go. Adrian, how do you get W2 started? What are some good options for W2? Thank you for everything. Um, check out gusto.com slash bootcamp. It's, it's a promo link of mine, but you can get the first three months for free. And you get all of your W-2 employees set up inside of there and run payroll. QuickBooks is another option. It's a little bit more complicated. But if you're using QuickBooks already for your bookkeeping, I'd recommend QuickBooks. But if you're, if you're not, use Gusto. It's much more simple to get things set up. And uh, like I said, use gusto.com slash bootcamp. And that's my link. That's my, my um, promo link. And you'll get for the first three months for free. And it's really simple to set them up. Like it's walk you step by step. Which state are you in? You put their social security numbers in. You put everything in there and it runs payroll for you. And at the end of the year, we'll submit W-2s to the employees automatically. Does door-to-door -door with business cards still work? I have time, but not sure if it still works. I'm not a huge fan of door uh, business cards if you're doing door-to-door. Door -door. I'd rather knock on the door, say hello to the person. If they're not home, have a door hanger that I put on the doorknob. Uh, and then if they do answer the door, I'm still giving them the door hanger. Uh, and, and if you don't have them, lawncaremedia.com has some good templates uh, that you can get where you actually put the dollar amount of the lawn service or treatments or property cleanups or mulch. So that way, if they're not home, if, you, if you're standing there waiting for them to come to the door, you can literally put the prices in real quick. And then when they uh, get the door hanger, all they have to do is send a picture of that door hanger to your email. And it already has all the information required to get them um, on the schedule. So if you might as well, you're already at the property, give them an estimate. 
I had one call. The lady said her lawn guy cut her one acre lot for $35. Yeah, you gotta love it. Hey, Mike, thanks for commenting back to me the other day. Since then, I've gotten and landed four estimates that are over $500 per project. Still planning on sending more every door direct mail out next month. Great job, James. What insurance should I get first? Uh, definitely, you're going to want your auto insurance, so your trucks are covered, and then also your general liability insurance. That's definitely the place you want to start. As you grow, you might go into other things uh, in terms of protecting like cybersecurity. Um, we have a whole bunch of other stuff now, too, as you grow, get bigger, but definitely start with those two. Uh, and, and typically, remember that general liability will cover a lot of different things typically. There's like 10 or 12 different categories usually. It'll cover like errors and omissions, damage, uh, property liability, things like that. Um, it can be covered. Mike, we are in a small town. Some of your conduct does not apply well here, but love it anyways. Keep it up. Oh, okay. Um, I actually really like small towns, by the way. Um, my, our very first location started in Blaine. You can look it up, Blaine, Washington. I think it has like six or 7,000 people that live there. And um, I really like small towns. Uh, you get much better brand penetration. You can spend much less money on marketing in order to still achieve uh, brand awareness. So I really like small towns. I'm telling you, you can build a million-dollar business in a five, $6, 000, five to 6,000 person town if you just focus on your marketing um, that way. I'm switched to being taxed as an S-corp. Would putting myself on payroll through Gusto be a good idea? When you're an S-Corp, you have to give yourself a payroll of some sort as a W-2 employee because you're an S-Corp. You, you do have to pay yourself a reasonable salary and be a W-2 to some extent. So talk to your accountant, uh, your CPA, and they should be able to kind of walk you through what that amount should be and how to, how to run that. What do you think of Google Ads? I think Google Ads are good. Um, I like them for two reasons. One, uh, I like traffic to my site, and you can get usually really good cost per click driving leads to your site, uh, just traffic, I mean clicks. So if you're obsolete in terms of your website, like it's brand new, you might actually have great SEO, but if there's no traffic, Google will penalize you. This is why when you go and search like for lawn care, uh, that the top spots are usually gonna be like Home Advisor, Lawn Starter, Angie's List, because they're spending so much money on marketing and driving so much traffic to their site that they have a lot of domain authority. And we see this like Augusta Lawn Care, now that we have so many locations, our sites will rank faster now simply because the main URL, the domain, has authority. There's so much traffic driving to it. Google automatically gives it a, a boost in, in the ranking. So if you're brand new, your website, um, I would do Google Ads sometimes just to drive traffic to the site because then Google will see more people there and start to make more and more connections between the keywords and what your site is. It needs to index it. Um, but then also, you know, Google ads about six months ago really had a really good moment there where we were getting incredible cost per click for Google. Uh, it's come back up as I expected. We talked about it at conference. I, I, I say it was gonna be short term and it, they've come back. Um, but still, still a great ad product in my mind. It will be as long as the, the big players aren't super focused on it. And when we had the supply chain shortage and so many big companies started cutting their marketing budgets, uh, Google and Facebook were some of the first places they started cutting their budget on. And so it makes for a good opportunity to get in for lower cost per click. I'm trying to get a certain company to print me some flyers and they said five, four to five days, but it's almost over been almost two weeks before the postcards are printed. Do you think I should just swap over to something? Uh, I'm guessing you're asking if you to switch to another service. Um, I would say, look, most people, most printing companies are behind right now. Uh, with transportation, shipping, everything like logistics wise is, is behind. So I wouldn't jump ship quite yet. Maybe just call them. I was, I was the one where you said the $20 guy We'll fill up his schedule. I'm mid-level price, definitely not premium yet, but I'm wondering if every door direct mail is old-fashioned enough. He's not attracting the right people. Yeah, this is why I'm a big believer of testing things in your market because I've, I've seen it time and time again where every door, every door direct mail will fl flop in one market and the exact same flyer, exact same postcard, two neighborhoods over or two counties over will just do incredibly well. Uh, and so this is why you got to test things. This is why I like small markets, by the way, because you can test more for a cheaper cost. And so I would just recommend don't put all your eggs in one basket. Like, you know, some people watch like a, a video from 10, 15 years ago of people on YouTube and they talk about flyers. Or they talk about door hangers. And I'm not against flyers and door hangers, but realize that that's not the only marketing strategy. And in some markets that might do well and other markets might flop. So I'd much rather someone do a five, five different methods you know, next door, Google, Facebook, every door direct mail, door hangers and door knocking, and then see what works. Don't spend all your marketing dollars on one avenue because if it bombs, then you, you, know, you don't have any dry powder.
best way to market a small town. I have a video coming out this tomorrow. Tomorrow is a video coming out. Um, it's actually an interview I did with a young gentleman that owns a lawn care business and uh, specifically talking about the strategy for small, uh, small towns and small neighborhoods. Using the door hangers, what, what if you underestimate the yard? Would it be better to have command center do the phone estimates? Um, I, I wouldn't say so. If you're already at the property, you're probably going to be the most accurate, even though command center this is one of our, our franchisees on um, Fenton. Um, but I would still say if you're at the property, you personally, then I would just focus on giving the number. If you're having one of your employees or a bunch of employees that have no idea about lawn care, just distribute door hangers, I would probably push them towards calling command center where they're going to be able to do the estimate over the phone and sell the job um, without you have to go back still. But if you're there, you might as well give the number because then it saves the time of even having to do the estimate over the phone. How well do you find the vehicle lettering to work to get calls? Just got my trailer lettered up for the season. It's one of those things, branding is very, very hard to measure. Um, it's not so much about the direct response marketing of someone seeing the truck and giving me a call. It's a matter of them seeing the truck and because of the lettering and the branding, them remembering me and maybe next year after they see me 20 times in a neighborhood, and then they call, but usually they're not going to call because of my truck. They're going to call because they got uh, a postcard or they got, they saw a Facebook ad, they saw a Google ad, but it's because of the constant touches that I've made over the course of time, which is 20 or 30 times I'm seeing the truck. They actually know the brand and therefore that buying transaction and that decision is expedited because they've seen the truck so many times. So I look at trucks more of a branding play than a direct response marketing type play. I am making a leap from me in a truck with two people to having another truck going. What's the most important systems to take the steps and do you have any tips for making this transition? Yeah, this is when you need pay for performance. So check out p4psoftware.com. Look at the training videos. They're free. Um, because as soon as you don't, if you, as soon as you have unmanaged labor, i.e. you do not have eyes on the employee all day long, there is going to be waste. So the sooner you can cap that and manage that, the better. Uh, and the second thing I would say is, uh, I'm not a big fan of micromanaging in terms of always knowing they're at, asking where they're at, driving up and checking on them, quote unquote, like seeing if they're working or not. I, I'm not a huge fan of that. That's why P4P is so important. Um, and that way they're self-motivated to make more money. And if they're not, then yeah, that's up to them. But uh, I'd say P4P is extremely important at this stage. And take the person that's been with you longer. That person goes out solo and in a truck. And then you keep the other more less experienced person with you in the truck. So that way you don't have the two of them going out together. And potentially now you have an issue with you know a very, very weak performer, not knowing, understanding how things work. I would recommend you being the kind of quote unquote trainer that the first two or three weeks, have that weaker individual that's less experienced with you, have the person that's been with you for a while, uh, go out and uh, do the work by themselves or two people or whoever's experienced go out and do that other truck first. What do you think about Lawn Starter? I'm not a huge fan of lead sites. In the short term, they're good. Uh, there's actually a class action lawsuit against Home Advisor, is it? I forget, another company lead source uh, because of this uh, issue. Uh, they just providing not fraudulent leads, but just leads that aren't really, people didn't actually intend to actually submit their information for that service, et cetera. But yet they're charging contractors. Uh, I look at it as like renting versus buying. Uh, you're renting this lead from Monster. You're renting that lead from Home Advisor. You don't actually own them because next week Home Advisor or Angie's List or whatever is going to be trying to sell them to a different contractor for another lead. Because they're at the end of the day, they're, just, they're incentivized to get more leads to sell to contractors. They're not in the business of keeping that customer with you long term. When you create a Google business page, you make a standard or plus page. I was I saw your comment today and I don't know exactly what you're talking about. If you're talking about Google Plus, Google Plus doesn't exist anymore. Um but the standard page will work just fine. I just increased prices by 25%. Let's go. Hey Mike, does your program include what exactly are the numbers to know? I keep hearing know your numbers. Just don't know exactly what the numbers I need. Yeah, so like, you know, I would recommend, here, I'll show you real quick. Um, this is, you know, a common common issue is not knowing your numbers. What numbers do I need to know? Obviously, in your CRM, it should have some decent reports for you to be able to know certain things. But this is kind of why we created uh, P4P software to be able to know the most important part of your business in terms of numbers is efficiency. Because the biggest thing at the end of the day that we're selling is labor. That's really all we're selling. And so, uh, let me see here. Let me show you my screen. This screen is uh, is in development. So if it looks a little bit funky, it is because we are still working on this. By the way, mikeandies.com slash vote. You should do it. 
Uh, but let me show you this page here. Stick with me for a second. Uh, stop screen. Okay, here we go. Share screen. So this is the back end of P4P software. And this is what you're going to kind of see um, once you become a member at p4psoftware.com. So this ranks our employees and shows what they're making their effective hourly rate for how much their labor revenue clocked out and ranks them. They can see this top part, kind of give that competitive edge and a little bit of com competitive juices flowing. But then these are the type of numbers you need to know. And these numbers are off because we have a whole bunch of training new employees at this location getting trained. Uh, but you can see all sorts of metrics in terms of how efficiency is moving month to date, year a month over month, et cetera. You can see this number is like six or seven dollars lower than usual, mostly due to the fact that there's a whole bunch of new pe people getting trained this week. But uh, yeah, so this is the kind of numbers that I feel is most important. And then what we're working on right now is some more reports in terms of seeing these numbers over time. So you see projects that are in status or in progress. You see uh, month to date over time. So like, hey, if this is starting to become, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70 overtime hours, probably time to hire someone. So these are the type of numbers I look at the most efficiency scores, because at the end of the day, all we're doing in this industry and in every home service industry is we are selling labor. That's all we're doing. And so you got to make sure that that variable cost of labor is as efficient as possible. Everything else is fixed besides gas prices. Let's go. Um, you know, most fixed costs though of materials, trucks, those things are constant. You know, your, your a payment to the bank for your trucks is going to stay the same. For equipment, it's going to stay the same. Your rent stays the same. Your utility stays the same. Uh, what changes the most and fluctuates the most is also the thing that we sell and is the actual product that we sell in our industry, and that is labor. So you've got to keep your numbers on labor uh, and really know what those numbers are. So um, that's what I would say, Danny. Check out uh, p4psoftware.com. And there's a whole lot of stuff that we're building down the road for reporting specifically and trying to link employees up with other employees that are more efficient, right? Because like one of the things that's, um, you know, I was talking to Brad today about this, like one of the most frustrating th things sometimes as an employer is like trying to nicely tell someone that they're not doing a great job, but if they just talk to so-and-so, they can learn a lot of things. Well, that's a weird conversation, awkward conversation to have, but the goal is with the software to be that intermediary that says, hey, look, Bob, uh, it looks like the past two weeks you've been mowing and you haven't been hitting above base pay. You should go talk to Charlie. Charlie has been crushing it the past two weeks and he might be able to show you a thing or two about how to be more efficient. And that can all be done on the back end using the data that we have with P4P. And same thing with telling you when you should be hiring. You can say, hey, look, your budget hours that are on the schedule is consistently increasing. Based upon our projections, you're going to need a full-time employee within the three weeks. Otherwise, you're going to be going, going into overtime. That's the type of kind of you know, AI driven decision making that we want to implement into P4P down the road uh, using these numbers. So it's kind of like the long term goal of P4P. What's your employee, your hiring employee process? Check out the video I made a few weeks ago about this. I walked through like 12 different steps and it really correlates to your sales process. It's almost exactly how you should be thinking about in terms of hiring um, and every single step uh, from onboarding to uh, the interview process, all of that. How should you advertise on Nextdoor? Do you use sponsor zip code feature? We do not use sponsors, just local deals. Hi, Mike. What kind of marketing would you recommend for business in its second year? I'm at 50 yards. I'm looking to get 100 to 120. The video tomorrow morning that's coming out is really going to be exactly for you. It's to talk about getting your first 100 customers and how to really focus on small neighborhoods to get that done. When I do every door direct mail, I always pick routes that average 100K plus in annual revenue or income. I've only ever done print marketing. I'm afraid of spending money online and not getting responses, looks. Every door direct mail, every door direct mail, LK, don't know what that means, sorry, how many, oh, lets me know how many see it. Yeah, you know, you know, some people feel like, hey, technically Facebook and Google could not be showing this ad to anyone. It could be like phantom robots that are clicking on my website. That's true. Um, but what you can do is set up a landing page. So what I'll show you here, if I can show you, let me see here, one second. That's, that is P4P, but let me show you. So what we do for Augusta Lawn Care is, this is our local site. We have these pages here, what's called landing pages that you can only get here if you directly go to this link. It's not tied to the homepage. So you can only get here if you actually follow this link. So what you can do on your Facebook ads or your Google ads is drive everyone to this specific link. So if you get a form request from here, then you actually know that it came from that Facebook or Google ad. 
Uh, and it's not just like, oh, I don't know where it's coming from. So um, that's what I would say is try to drive that traffic to a landing page so you can track it a little bit more. You can use things like pixels or uh, Google has tracking too, but a lot of those things are getting blocked with security features right now. Um, and so I would be relying on a little bit more landing page drive style stuff. So cool. Let me go ahead and hide that. Green Formula Lawn Care is the is in the building out of Maine. Respect, bro. Ready for the season. Paul Green, thanks. I'm 17 and starting a lawn care company for my car. Do you have any advice? Whew, tear out the carpet. Otherwise, it's going to be mushrooms growing and algae and fungus. Because I have a small marketing budget, trying to run lean. Got it. Yes, yeah, so I just split it up, right, James? So if you are if you have a small marketing budget, I'd be probably leaning more on door-to-door -door and door knocking and door hangers and yard signs uh, than I would online or every door direct, every door, every door direct mail is typically pretty expensive, uh, to get customers, honestly, like your cust your customer acquisition cost is typically pretty high, but what's nice about it is you can just penetrate it over and over and over. It's really, really good targeting. You look better rested today. <laughs> Keep it <laughs> mercy. Uh, thanks for creating the new P4P software. Did our first payroll off of it and it went super quick. And remember user for <laughs> Oh, John. John got a free iPad Air because he got the most referrals. So in order to join P4P, you need a referral link. For everyone that always is asking Brad for a referral link, we don't give away referral links. you got to know someone inside of P4P in order to get access, or you got to read the book. The book has the code. It's hidden inside. But Or you can just use John Gerritsen. He just constantly wants to be at the top of the leaderboard for the most uh, referrals. That's genuinely what I believe his goal is in doing that. Thank you, brother. Someone always calls me Andy. What's up, Andy? My name is Mike. My last name is Andes with an E and an S. But Andy works. There's someone locally in our in our market that has their name is Andy with a Y. And it's called Andy's Lawn Care. And literally when people hear that I used to have Andy's Lawn Care, they think it anyways, long story. All right. Who's Andy? Yeah, I know exactly right. How do I hire my first employee? I talked about this a little bit earlier. You definitely, if they're going to be full-time, get them on a W-2. Uh, use gusto.com. Uh, if you, you, The first three months are free. Check out gusto.com slash bootcamp. It's my referral link. And you can drive out for three months, get them set up. We literally within probably 20 minutes, uh, you get their, all their information in there, be able to submit payroll correctly. Just do it legally. Trust me, it's worth it. If you get audited, you've got to have this stuff nailed down. I've been audited a few times. And... Now it's just like, hey, there's eventually they're going to catch up to you. And so you might as well just do things right from the beginning. It's just better. Right, Brad? Bingo. He does, he's a CPA, so he's probably seen the, the flip side of very, very hor horrible things. So do you write off your vehicle expenses or mileage on your Augusta company? We do uh, vehicle expenses. Um, that's going to be different. Talk to your CPA, which one's going to be best for you. If you do mileage versus vehicle expenses, it has a lot to do with what type of truck you're buying. If it's new, if you have debt leasing, all that sort of thing. Does the ramp rack take away the ability to hook up a trailer if needed? It can, we don't take them on and off. I know they kind of advertise that you can take them on and off really fast. Maybe the sport ones you can. Um, I know some of our, a lot of our franchisees love that the sport one it's lighter. Um, but we don't take them on and off. It's not that simple, honestly, even with little Jack thing, but Hey, maybe I'm just, technically illiterate, but we don't move them on and off very much at all. What type of ad have you had the most success with on Google ads or Facebook, for example, first cut free for lawn for new customers? Uh, I would lean much more into your targeting than necessarily giving away free stuff. Um, that type of uh, offer right there, you got to ask yourself what type of customer is going to come to you. Is it going to be the person that doesn't care about price? Probably not. It's going to be the, the cost sensitive customer that's going to be attracted by a free service up front. And they're going to jump to the next person who offers them three free services if they get signed up with them. What if I have a small marketing budget, but I'm very introverted? Should I try Facebook and Google instead? If you have a small, small marketing budget and you're very introverted, go ahead and do door hangers and yard signs and just don't knock on the door, right? So do the yard signs, do the door hangers. Just be, like literally for a few hundred bucks, you could like target several thousand houses with door hangers and yard signs and get quite a few customers. You're just going to have to put in the work of doing the door hangers. Um, which is just time. How did you decide on a name for your business? I used to play a lot of golf. So Augusta Lawn Care uh, is named after Augusta National, which is in Augusta, Georgia, which is where they play the Masters. And the Masters is cool. Yeah, that's what I love about every door direct mail. Worked amazing last year, and there wasn't even labor shortage or price hikes. I didn't even double up routes last year. I tested different zips. I will double up this year. Cool. 
Double up, I mean, send to same routes more than once. Yeah, cool. All right, so um, I'm going to go ahead and bounce over to here and show, let's see here, mikeandy.com slash, oh, in a couple weeks, we are announcing Landscape Summit 2023. It's going to be killer awesome. You're, you're going to love it. All right, so if you haven't already, make sure you go to mikeandy.com slash vote. We're going to be going over the winners here in just a moment. So this is the first round of the tournament. And again, whoever wins this is going to get either the 2K cash prize or we're going to send out the film crew for an entire day. We'll do a whole video for your entire crew. We'll do pictures. We'll do interviews for your website uh, and just get drone footage, the whole nine yards. It's going to be great. So uh, make sure you go here, go submit your bracket, see who's going to win. All you have to do is submit here which person you're going to, you think is going to win. And let me go ahead and pull up the results currently where we're at. Let's go ahead and pull this up here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and close this down in two minutes. So if you haven't already, make sure you submit your vote. So let me go ahead and remove this. I'm going to show you the actual, um, let's see here, stop screen. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and share this one here. Okay, so it looks like there's not too much change in the last little bit. We got a few more responses in. We still got Stanley Dirt Monkey crushing the lawn care nut. Uh, round one here, we got Long Creek Juggernaut taking a massive cut here on long, uh, Copper Creek cuts, which, you know, maybe Copper Creek cuts if Bob cut when Bobcat would have let him take his deduction on his taxes and not give him a 1099, uh, then he potentially could have made a comeback here in the fourth quarter, but it looks like a little tight. Uh, as we are wrapping up round one of the tournament, we got Top Notch Lawn Care crushing Owl Blades, it looks like here. We got a few more votes coming in now. Uh, Brian Lawnmate is just getting demolished by Ryan Nor. I'm very disappointed, Brian. Um, you know, I made that video about uh, my truck, and I was really hoping that uh, you'd get uh, your your crew on here and vote up the red. You know, notice that the media team here for Brian did red, matching the truck. And uh, here we have a blue wave of Ryan Nor just taking him out. It's very very disappointing. You know, we have 399 votes to to Brian's 47. So we need some people here to vote here. Hop in right now. Go to mikegangs.com slash vote. Help out some of these people. Like here, poor Keith. He has less than a quarter of the votes. 110 votes. At 337. Up. Oh, some just voted now. Some just voted for Blades of Grass Lawn Care again. Oh man. Then we got Spencer's Lawn Care just getting demolished by Lawn Care Life. Like. Not 89%. My goodness, we should next year maybe we'll have to do uh, some sort of bets on each of these rounds. But then this one, this one's the biggest landslide of all. We got 20 votes for Tigran. 95.5% of people voted for SB mowing over Tigran in round one of the tournament. And it's his turf again, just demolishing Florida turf pros. And so, uh, you know, Florida turf pros is out there making some killer awesome content now. But I'm telling you, it's his turf is just coming up behind him and just. Just taking it, taking it here in the fourth quarter. Okay, so let's go ahead and announce the winners of round one. If you haven't already seen it, you can check out mikeandies.com slash vote. We are determining the YouTuber of the year, and you can have your chance to win either $2,000 or a full film day. We'll fly out to your location. It'll be epic. So I'm going to leave this open for about two more minutes, and then we're going to announce the winners for the first round of Mo Madness. We got some more questions coming here that we'll answer and then we will hop directly into that and announce the winners uh what's your handicap oh you must be talking about for uh golf i had a scratch handicap for probably about eight months but i was usually around a one or two handicap before i stopped playing golf completely i went cold turkey went from playing every single day to not not playing but maybe once a year uh because i just get frustrated with putting because I used to be good at it. Now I'm not. I want to go to the conference 2023. Let's go. It's going to be coming out here in a few weeks. The announcement's going to be epic. How do we win the prizes? you got to fill in the bracket. you got to vote. And if you if you get all your votes correct, if you vote every single part of the bracket correctly, that's how you're going to win this. And there's going to be one winner. Uh, and so the winner is going to be one of the audience, one of you all. And then there's also whoever is voted and actually wins the championship. That influencer is also going to get uh, one of the prizes, either 2K or a full film day. Use your marketing strategy in Goo Greenwood, Illinois, Indiana. I cut out the bottom 10% that was, that was, did not meet a specific density requirement. It's awesome. Did I have to get them all right? Alex, whoever has the closest bracket is going to be the one that win is the winner for uh, Mo Madness. You ever considered doing conference Eastern or Central US? Potentially, but right now, like 
our team is so involved that the cost of us flying out there would just, we'd have to double the price of the conference. So I know it's not the most ideal to be flying out the West coast, but uh, it's definitely uh, least cost prohibitive. And we, we already lose money on conference. So I got to keep, if we're going to keep the cost of conference uh, affordable, we've got to do that. Blades of lawn, blades of glory, lawn care, $71,000 first year in business word of mouth only. Let's go. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, Lee's dash, your hopes are being dashed. Keith Kalfas is not in the lead. I'm telling you what, you gotta get in there and make you make, 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 you can make some fake accounts, Lee, you know, vote him up. But it looks like here, we're, as we're hitting the shot clock here in the end of the fourth quarter, is going to lose. I now have 80% of my customers within a five mile diameter. One neighborhood alone takes 1.5 days to do everything in there. Let's go. Thank you. I appreciate it. Let's get a torch my bracket. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, you got you to stick with the trajectory here all right charles baldwin say cool loving videos great audio gone lee i'm not being well either okay cool all right we're gonna go ahead and announce the winners of the first round of landscape summit so let's start here at the top let me go ahead and switch this over uh boom stop that screen all right so our first matchup is let's go window here boom oh madness okay so our first matchup wait where did i put it there it is let's go okay boom. why did that not show up okay here we go pull us up boom stop that screen okay so let's go ahead and announce these winners so if you have your bracket near you uh you want to compare notes let me go ahead and share this boom all right the winner round one of Mo Madness between Stanley, Dirt Monkey, and the Lawn Care Nut goes to Stanley. Dirt Monkey is the winner of match number one. Match number two, we have a landslide victory for Lawn Care Juggernaut over Copper Creek Cuts. Florida let us down once again. Match number three with 449 responses. Top notch Lawn Care takes out Owl Blades in round one of the Mo Madness tournament. Then here again, Ryan Nort. Just a blue wave against Brian's lawn maintenance. Just crushed it here in the first round. So, hey, the final eight, the, the, sorry, the elite eight is coming up here next week. So we'll be uh, voting on that starting Monday. But here again, Keith Kalfas loses out to Blades of Grass Lawn Care. Johnny is going to the next round of Mo Madness after winning match five. Match number six, Spencer Lawn Care gets demolished by Lawn Care Life. 89% of votes go to Lawn Care Life over Spencer Lawn Care. This one was just, just demolished here. We got Tigran at 20 versus SB Mowing at 429 votes for SB Mowing. So congratulations, SB Mowing. Moving on to the second round, the Elite Eight of Mo Madness, getting one step closer to the prize. And Florida Turf Pros losing out to It's His Turf. Big time. Again, these are landslide victories here in round one of Mo Madness. I'm looking forward to seeing what the second round is going to bring us, the Elite Eight. So here you can see, if we switch on over to here, we can switch to what the bracket's going to look like now. Obviously, Stanley is now going to be going up against the Lawn Care Juggernaut. We're going to have Owl, no, we're going to have Top Notch Lawn Care going up against Ryan Nora Lawn Care. We're going to have who is it? Blades of Grass Lawn Care going up against Lawn Care Life. We're going to have SB Mowing going up against It's His Turf in the Elite Eight, which starts next week, Monday. We're going to start the, the voting March 21st. I'll be, I'll be putting a link in the socials, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, so you can make sure you vote for the Elite Eight. So hopefully no one's brackets was broken. Hopefully you got in. Make sure you still vote next week because if you want your favorite YouTuber to actually get the opportunity to have our whole media team out at their place, we want to do that for them because a lot of them, unfortunately, don't have a, the, the team with all the cameras. So we'd like to kind of help them get some better angles and pictures and videos for their channel. Or they just want cash. Hey, we know how long Kid Juggernaut works. He likes that moolah. So maybe he'll just take $2,000 cash. But one of you will also be winning. So make sure you vote each week. Whoever gets the closest on their bracket is going to be the winner of that $2,000 cash. Or 
the entire day in media with the team. So thank you all for coming. Uh, really looking forward to next week of the Elite Eight. And I appreciate you all hopping here on this Friday evening. Have a wonderful rest of your evening and an awesome weekend. Take care.